Good day. I hope everybody out there is having a good one. So, if this is your first time to the channel. What we do around here is we uh, follow people's suggestions rather than following algorithms. Um, we have broadened our horizons uh, exponentially way more than the algorithm ever would have had a chance to do. Uh, people don't realize how region locked we are. The algorithm is going to show you things according to your language most usually and then even if you type in like say things from another country it tends to just show you that more of that same thing or versions of that thing in english so there's a lot of artists that don't get noticed or don't get discovered by people unless other people are pointing and saying hey you need to go check this artist out i found whole genres of music like this um one of them being this one right here that we're going to talk about today um we're going to talk about um 11 12 um plus uh key players in a genre called flamenco now um flamenco is uh, a genre from andalusia spain um or andalusia um uh where it's it's traditional form was um it was more singing and uh dancing accompaniment rather than uh what it is known to today it wasn't until like uh the end of the 20th century that flamenco started um you know adding the guitar and um doing things with that and then along came some of these key players that now um flamenco is basically known you know as a guitar music and it's driven uh so many other styles of music um including simply uh what we call like finger style today um, it's born of this this genre. You've heard this music in movies or you, you probably when you're younger or whatever, and you never knew what it was. Well, here we go. Um, we're going to go down and these right here, like I said, these are some of the, uh, the key players um, in this. Now, um, the, the guitarists we're going to um, go through, um, the, they're not like the end all be all there are tons of people doing this today there's one we just looked at um it's got a killer youtube channel ben woods uh does metallica and stuff uh flamencified uh if that's not a word it is now um you're welcome uh but uh and one thing i'll say real quick if i mispronounce something or pronounce a name wrong being somebody that gets their pr name pr mispronounced like their whole lives i find this like low on the list of things you know of irritation i get it you know when people from other countries are saying your your stuff but i'm from america we're good at stealing other people's language we're not totally good at saying it i even have a hard time pronouncing my own language so uh please bear with me with some of the names or whatever but the the point being is you these are artists that you should be checking out if you're just getting into guitar or uh you want to learn about this genre this is this is some stuff that um or some people that you should be checking out now first up we want to check out um sabacus um i believe is somewhat how you say his name he was more on the traditional end of things um he's from 1921 to 1990 um and when i say traditional that does that means only guitar traditional end of things um not with the the, the vocal end of things now um there have been plenty um of great flamenco players now real quick i forgot to say this is an article done by uh panshu nigam we'll have it all um i'm pretty sure i butchered your name sorry um we're going to have it all linked up and everything below so everybody can go through this or just skip me all together and go through this. Um, now, um, well, now, when people are credited like for the global spread of uh, Flamenco's um, popularity, this is one of those, um, one of those people. Um, Savagus was inspired by uh, uh, Ramon Montoya. Um, 
not an ego Montoya. <laughs> um, and uh, started, uh, although we're going to talk about another Montoya, um, started playing guitar with uh, when he was four. Now, one thing you'll notice with a lot of these guitars, not all, but a lot of them, like they started very young and they really had a long time to really hone this skill and then really didn't get famous until you know, they were in there. So you can imagine how much they had honed this skill. So that's why these people are on this list. Now, um, now, uh, uh, his his style was deeply influenced by collaborations with flamenco uh, singers and um, uh, and also uh, early life generally spanning uh, South America, Mexico, New York, and finally back to his native Spain. Uh, people admired him not only for his technical and compositional skills, but for his tremendous genius adding the classical element of flamenco playing. Um, he's also said to have a uh, perfect pitch, which that that's like a select few people that have that. Even singers will tell you uh, and producers, the uh, 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 Bondino, whatever his name is, he'll tell you he used to have her, but it's something that you can only have for a certain amount of time. Um, and some people that have it later in life, they're really lucky because that's usually not a thing. Um, uh, he's uh, known for um, his clean and uh, virtuosic, um, virtuosic uh, style of, or virtuosic style of which um, has loved both uh, foreign um, audiences and flamenco purists. Um, he's brought flamenco to the the biggest concert halls and theaters um, in and outside of Spanish speaking regions. Uh, many famous flamenco guitarists. Um, to come such as um, flamenco, um, many famous flamenco guitarists to come such as Paco de Lucia, Vicente, um, Amigo, uh, Tomatito, um, etc. Um, uh, have been influenced by this man. So uh, he is one. Um, we have some others that they um are a lot older they are a lot more traditional and you can tell they are more playing with something that you would picture more with like um a classical accom accompaniment okay like uh, they would be like in a you know um orchestra type setting now the man the myth the legend the god of guitar himself paco de lucia um now, uh, he's not just best known for his um, Flamenco guitarist outside of um, Spain. He is um, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Now, um, I hadn't learned about him until, like, doing this channel. I since realized that I did know, like, I had heard his music and had seen him. I just never knew who he was and was never fed his stuff. Remember, I'm from America. I grew up with like, you know, like even my guitar influences that were outside of America were like, you know, British, like, you know, like, or like Jeff Beck and, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah, you know, when you, when you grow up in a, you know, like T Tony Iommi was a great big influence, but, you know, like I would say like BB King was an even bigger influence and, um, you know, like Eddie Van Halen somewhat, you know, Steve Vai, um, Satriani, you know, but, you know, even Carlos Santana, but like that was the majority. Santana was like the majority of Spanish music, you know, and Spanish influence that we were getting. But now listening to Santana, I hear him totally different after hearing all of these, you know, great artists play this genre of music. Now, I'm not saying Santana's flamenco but it's that that spanish you can see where a lot of these similarities and where a lot of inspirational things and in, inspired each other um and just yeah okay now uh paco has a very special role in the evolution of flamenco um see now what he was the basically the first to do some he was he basically 
was infusing jazz and all this. He got a lot of pushback. Now, he was another one that started when he was a wee little tot. Um, so um, when everybody else was, you know, out there playing or whatever, he was practicing um, guitar. Now, uh, it's it said that he easily learned com complex you know, places, artists like uh, Nino, Ricardo, and Sabacus, um, and embellished them with with his own liking, which at first angered a lot of people. That's you know, including his brother. Um, but uh, Paco performed um, extensively with legendary artists from all backgrounds. The most popular um, of his acts being um, his association with with Cameron. Um, which we have on this channel, you have to, you have to see this video, um, of him and Cameron, they, they, these two are both no longer with us, but watching these both together, it like has an emotional effect on you. It just does. Um, a, uh, premier, uh, flamenco voice of all time. He also collaborated, um, with, uh, Chick Corea, um, a jazz pianist. Um, uh, or is it Chicory? Um, and uh, John McLaughlin, Aldi Miola, um, also, um, Vicente. We'll we'll get into that, but um, yeah, he is like the what everybody is. That's the standard everybody's held to is Mr. Paco de Lucia. He's the one that when anybody talks about flamenco or any guitarists want to talk about who the greatest guitarist in the world is, all your greatest guitarists in the world are going to point to this guy. Um, and for good reason. Go watch this video. You'll see why. Um, we'll have you all linked up. Now, uh, Manolo, um, San Luca, uh, Manolo, um, uh, he was another very important Spanish guitarist and composer who believed in uniting traditional, um, uh, uniting traditional with a capacity of experimentation. He was seven years old, number one, um, when his, his father introduced him to the flamenco guitar, and he began his professional career before he turned fourteen. Um, Manolo is known for introducing creative artistry in his music without branching into other forms of music. It's, uh, this skill that, uh, led him to win numerous awards and share some of the greatest stages of, uh, music. Um, now another, um, artist, like I said, we're going to have you all linked up. I just, I want to get through these i will leave you all linked up with this article i think it's very important um that we talk about some of these uh nino miguel another one that had a uh quite a like a, a sad story a sad life but another one who gave a lot <clears throat> to the to the genre and uh um, also one that uh, we have here on the uh channel now um the uh the truth is he was plagued with like, you know, mental illness and stuff, but his, his technical skills and the stuff that he was able to pull off, even with like a few strings, um, there's video out there that it's, it's sad to watch, but it's also amazing at the same time of him doing some things with like a piece of plastic and a few strings. And it's like, wow. Um, he, um, he, he's another one that, you know, he left us, fairly early 1975 2013 he was on the youngest side to you know be leaving us but he had a rough uh a really uh rough life like i said mental illness uh addiction it you know it's a it's a monster um and it takes the best of people and um yeah but um uh it was the 70s when uh he really uh caused a sensation um with uh with his playing style um, he was one of the prominent figures among guitarists who developed flamenco guitar from um, mere accompaniment to what the full-fledged act. Now, like I said, it, it was like when you see acoustics uh, guitars in classical music, it's only there as a little piece, not the thing. Now, flamenco is like, it's a guitar music. 
you know so that's why i said people would liken it to finger style or stuff like that um chico morato um morito morat morito um chico now <clears throat> it's another um one um who left us relatively early but um due to uh illness um he was uh born into a spanish musical family um and remained the flag bearer of the uh authentic version of flamenco um uh, he was widely renowned for his powerful and round sound, um, um, impressive melodic falsettas, his um, complex sense of rhythm, um, and um, just all around geniusness. We're going to be talking a lot more about him on um, the channel. He's got uh, uh, a few, yeah, solo albums out. Uh, stuff that you you really need like i said we're going to be talking a lot more about him on the channel we have a whole playlist dedicated to flamenco and i want this on this list so people could use this as a guide or, or starting post something guitarists just getting started these are guitarists that you should be checking out um we we will do videos more dedicated to D diving deeper into their music and what they're all about this is another one that we have on the channel um he um used to play if i'm remembering correctly he played with paco de lucia um after some um this is vicente amigo um after some legendary contemporary artist uh um we get to vicente um he's been a, a student of uh, Manolo uh, for like 10 years and then he started his professional career it was like 1988 um, he released his first album Dimi Carazin um, uh, um, in 1991 he released his first album in 1991 which uh, it already won multiple um, uh, awards he uh, has since performed with several international stages um, um, including um the in, um international festival um in uh seville uh where paco de lucia bob dylan keith richards um and he's also set, shared the stage with joe mclaughlin al Miola, stanley jordan a bunch of guitarists some of which we've talked about on this channel some we um have yet to take a deeper dive into but again take a look around and you're going to find some awesome guitarists. And, and I'm going to talk a little bit about Aldi Miola here in a little bit. Um, Paco Pena. Uh, Paco Pena is a Spanish guitarist who began his professional career when he was just 12. Um, Paco was, um, was renowned, um, was a renowned accompanist, um, companyist. I have a hard time with that word, sorry, throughout Spain. However, it was only in the 60s that he moved to London to become a soloist. The British audience heard flamenco for the first time um, and was startled. Paco was soon performing in the biggest concert halls in the world and sharing the stage with the likes of Jimi Hendrix. Um, now, like I said, these people that we've thought are geniuses on the guitar and they are they've taken inspiration from others much greater um and from other places completely and that's the thing you take inspiration from everywhere you know metal artists don't just take inspiration from other metal they take inspiration from all sorts of places. people that write music you write music you take inspiration from the world around you um his uh his music starts flamenco and then branches into diverse genres including jazz blues classical and even country uh besides being a uh, virtuoso um his his great um uh, paco uh, pino is a great mentor as well he created the world's first university for flamenco guitar course um he also founded um the um the central flamenco paco pina in cordoba right? cordoba and um later became the artistic director of 
Cordoba's International Guitar Festival. Now, here's one that I just uh, got an album of. Uh, Carlos Montoya, 1903 to um, 1993. He was here quite a while. Carlos Montoya, um, he was a legendary flamenco guitarist renowned um, for his virtuosity and profound influence on the genre. Um, you know, when I listen to him, um, I, uh, I, I hear a lot of the, the classical um, influence, especially the album I got, I think is a much earlier album. And um, it, it really has a much more um, uh, classical flamenco uh, feel to it than, um, um, say, more of uh, contemporary stuff. But um, lightning fast, uh, piccato, um, and intricate, uh, Matoyo's mastery of traditional techniques um, was unparalleled. And I'll tell you, the stuff that he does, it's like, you know, but this stuff, all these guys do, that's just, whew. and these are just the guitarists. I'm not talking about the singers. The, the, yeah. Okay. So, um, so he not only elevated flamenco to international prominence, but also seamlessly um, integrated modern elements into his performances. Um, his captivating uh, stage presence and numerous collaborations showcased his extraordinary talent to global audiences, making him a trailblazer and popularizing flamenco outside of Spain. And um, perhaps is why I, I so much easier would stumble across him than even uh, Paco de Lucia. Um, you know, believe it or not, even in international, there's like no, like, there's like Spain or Spanish music. Um, you, you got to dig and, you know, there's no like Paco de Lucia section. You know, there's no, you know, the, the, it's that you'd be lucky if you find a flamenco section. I'm just, just saying, it's not like they're, you know, um, other Americans can attest to what I'm saying. Um, uh, these are things that you have to look for. Uh, now, um, his legacy remarkable recordings um, and performances, Carlos Montoya remains one of the foremost and most celebrated flamenco guitarists of all time, and for good reason. Um, all, all of these other um, ones would, you know, point to, you know, him as, you know, a big influence, I am sure. Um, be, and, and most all of these or all of them are very humble and gracious uh, people. Um, uh, now, Tomatito, um, uh, who I believe we have this very exact song on the channel, um, very same video, uh, if not, it's from the same show. Um, in this, he has a guitarist that uses both pick and fingers. He switches between the two of them. Um, it's it's pretty neat just watching the technique, but he does it for tonal reasons, and it's it's pretty cool. If you're a guitarist, you'll probably appreciate that more than somebody just watching this video learning about new music. Now, um, in the '70s, uh, he was um, he accompanied uh, Paco de Lucia, but his most prominent public act appeared in 1979. That was a great year um, when he uh, formed an artistic a couple with um, Cameron and um, he was at his side until um, the the death of the singer. So they they were a thing together and I have yet to uh, do a video with uh, them together. But uh, you got to check out that video, Cameron with Paco de Lucia. Wow, that'll get you. Right in the fields. Um, the partnership debuted with the album La Leinda del Tiempo, um, which uh, introduced flamenco rock and was an instant hit. Their um, their album Paris '87 won a 2000 Latin Grammy for um, best flamenco album. Um, in his solo career, Tomatito has released six albums. Um, and, um, he's also won Grim Latin Grammy awards for those as well. Um, he, he's one of them ones. Um, he likes to, um, he, he loves improvising and just riffing and he's really like jazzy and, um, you, you can see where he's, he's gotten his influences. And I think 
personally from seeing what i've seen of cameron i could see why he likes the the imp improvisational type stuff um because some real beauty can be birthed to that if you and the others are all in sync and are all just in this groove and i you know i've I've seen this you know in real life and i've you know watched uh some of these players do some amazing things and one of the amazing things about this genre is that even at its most highly produced and written it has this feeling of free um it's like this free spirit of music that just feels like it's going wherever it wants, when it wants and how it wants, the timing it wants. And it, it will get to the end when it's ready. And it's just, it takes you for a ride and it, it will let you know when the ride is over, but just sit back and enjoy the ride. Um, because every, every piece of flamenco that I've ever listened to, it's just, that's one word that always kind of, what a ride you know and yeah so um uh, somebody else um uh a little even younger is uh antonio ray um 1981 to present um he is regarded as the best flamenco guitarist of the modern generation by many antonio ray is a madrid-born guitarist who started his career accompanying for his father um tony ray um, his international career kicked off at eight, uh, 1815 um, when he made his first Japan tour with acclaimed Japanese um, Valaria, 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 Yoko Kama, Kamsu Sabara, Sabara. Close? You're going to butcher me. I know it. Um, at 18, he was invited by renowned Spanish dancer Antonio um, Canales um, in Spain to join his journey. Um, Antonio's chariz charismatic uh, performance and incredible um, technicality is loved by audiences all over the globe. He's also known for his soulful compositions, including um, the music of... Um, Gallo de Apulia uh, for the the new Spanish ballet. Now he's he's somebody that we don't have on the channel yet, but we will. Um, he has been recommended. Um, but when I see all these on this list, and and I found this list because of you. These this list was born because of your suggestions from typing this stuff in. Google was like. So you like flamenco, do you? So thank you. Um, I wouldn't have even seen this list if it wasn't for your suggestions. Um, Antonio Ray obtained his uh, first prize at the La Union uh, Menes Festival in um, uh, Ma Marquia? Marcia? Marcia, Spain. Um, he has also won... Uh, the Nino Ricardo National Competition and the, uh, um, oh, whatever, contest in Barcelona. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. That's, I can't make my, I can't even say, I'm having a problem saying accompaniment. You think I'm going to be able to say some of that stuff? I can't make this dumb mouth work the right ways. Sorry. <laughs> now. This is somebody on the list that isn't from Spain or even Spanish at all. <laughs> um, in fact, he's Russian. Um, now, um, oh, really quick, back to the Japanese thing. A lot of earlier flamenco videos that you will find from earlier flamenco players, I have found that a lot of them, live, live ones, take place in japan it seems like they had a better appreciation or an earlier appreciation for the genre than we did now granted they're on that side of the hemisphere so you know it isn't that much of a stretch the same with like russia having a you know a, a greater better appreciation for flamenco than um perhaps we would uh because the the spanish music that 
you know, is coming up from like South America for us, uh, not so much from Spain. Um, so unless it's, uh, you know, coming from South America that came from Spain, you know what I mean? But, uh, yeah, like sambas and, you know, the stuff that, you know, a lot of the, um, you know, like the fiesta music that comes out of like Mexico and all that, you know, great stuff. Uh, that's the majority of like Spanish music. Um, it isn't, you don't hear flamenco a whole lot until it's like in movies and stuff. And, you know, and, uh, and, you know, now that I like, I, I go to watch like in older Westerns and stuff and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I know this. And it's just neat. Now, this guy, Grisha Gorachev, um, hope I didn't butcher too bad. Um, now, this guy, um, he, he was, uh, he was the guy that inspired the person that made this list to start flamenco so it's it's neat when the the inspiration snowball comes from a funny place um you know or you're somebody from spain and you're not um you know um or uh, surrounded with spanish music and you get influenced by somebody playing flamenco from russia <laughs> it's Kind of a weird inception thing going on there, but it's very cool. It, and it shows the power of, you know, music and how it can compel one. And um, so uh, he's he's also the only guitarist on this list that's not from Spain, as I mentioned. Now, um, uh, Grisha is um, native to St. Petersburg, Russia, um, but... Um, he studied in Spain and USA and is now living in the United States. He began playing the guitar at six. Go figure. Um, yeah, which we know is a, uh, <laughs> it's a, it's a running theme and it's a, it turns out to be a magical number, I guess, and embarked on a professional journey, um, as a child prodigy, uh, prodigy, prodigy, sorry. <laughs> See what I told you at age nine. Now, in 1997, um, he met and performed with Paco de Lucia. What a lucky gentleman to be this young and get to, yeah, lucky. Um, so, um, who has been a massive influence on him and many others, obviously. He continued to compose classical and flamenco uh, solos as well as recording flamenco compositions from legendary artists like Paco de Lucia, uh, Manolo, Vicente, among others. Um, Grisha describes his love uh, for flamenco. Uh, it was everything. The sound of the guitar, the rhythm. It's hard not to be moved by this music. It moves me so much that I want to cry. Um, and it surprised me that, you know, being a fan of guitar music and all that, it surprised me how moving this genre could be. Um, now, one that I will add, other than, we got to talk real quick about um, Franchu Nigam. Um, he, uh, He's been a passionate guitarist and keyboardist and music producer um, ever since um, he got his hands on the uh, instrument as a small child. Um, with uh, Harmony Vine, his goal is to, to share tips, knowledge um, about the music, gear, um, and, and all that stuff. Um, also, enjoy recording uh, music um, and guitar covers. Um, which you can check out on his Instagram page. We'll have you all linked up to him, Harmony Vine, all the, all the socials, and screw it, all these videos as well. Um, another one that was mentioned real quick that I want to talk about is Aldi Miola. Um, now, Aldi Miola, um, who, like I said, he was mentioned on the list, but um, he's not um, necessarily talked about on the list. He he shared the stage. I I actually did one where um it's him, Paco, and John McLaughlin. And they do this thing where they have the ability to sound like one instrument and then 16 at the same time. It's 
and there's only three of them up there it's 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 pretty mind altering to say the least and um yeah i highly i highly suggest going and checking that out um and uh aldi miola elegant gypsy has been uh a mo uh an album that has been like stuck in the player for a while now, um, as well as um, Carlos Montoya. Um, I got that vinyl, which was basically untouched. And um, it was like brand new. It had more wear on the uh, sleeve than the, the album itself. I bet it was played like once. And if that. And um, I've had uh, Aldi Miola playing um, uh, digitally, like I said, with that elegant gypsy, which I'd love to get on vinyl. I did find a vinyl um, of him at a at a uh, indoor flea marketplace, but it looked like somebody tied it to the back of the car and drove it down the road, um, and then um, took that and then um, used it to wear down sandpaper with. Uh, yeah, it was bad. So um, I I should have just grabbed it for like a wall hanger or something because it it. Uh, it was the casino album. Um, so yeah, uh, it, it might still be there, but, um, anyway, this, this is a very important genre and this is, um, a, a genre that, you know, there, there are a lot more key players in, in this genre and there's a lot more people doing this today and there's a lot more other guitarists doing, um, stuff in this vein, like we'll say finger style, um, but it all basically was birthed from this. This is what, there is so much killer music coming out of Spain. Like I get sent music from Spain, but a lot of it's metal. Um, um, very, uh, little of it is, you know, um, anything that's, you know, just if it's guitar driven, like I said, it's, it's metal. Um, you know, I got this uh, one, one man that's uh, really funny from out of Spain. We'll talk about him. Um, but uh, uh, at any rate, the, this this country has single-handedly put not only just a whole genre of music on the map, but it's put handfuls and handfuls and handfuls of just superior artists, uh, whether they be vocally, um, um, guitar, uh, clapping. I mean, clapping. They, Spain made clapping into an instrument like you wouldn't believe that clapping an instrument. Yeah, pretty funny. No, for real. Like, they do it like, they do clapping like I can't understand how they keep time and they're clapping like off sync so when one is open, the other one closes so it it sounds like the tempo is twice as fast, but it has this sound kind of like this gallopy sound. So they're like subtly, uh, it's, it's insane how they stay subtly off time and keep it through the whole time while Nino Miguel is going way all just all over the place on the guitar. It's just, yeah. And not to mention all the other people that are in there doing things as well. Um, it's just, yeah. There's a lot of stuff, and there's a lot of players that I highly suggest. Uh, please uh, take a look at the uh, Flamenco playlist. Check out these artists. Follow the links and go check out these artists. Show these to aspiring guitarists, people, that, especially youngsters that are just getting into guitar. I, I promise you they will be so thankful in the future that they knew about this now, especially if they're youngsters in the States and stuff, just because this stuff is on YouTube, doesn't mean it's getting fed to Americans it, still, even though everything's wide open, it's, it's region locked. So please, um, yeah. Uh, share this with anybody you can, um, you know, the links and stuff. Um, and let people know about these uh, phenomenal guitarists, because these are these are people that not only um, have revolutionized the way that we look at guitar and stuff, or, or help revolutionize the way that you know guitar playing and the way we look at guitar, but they're people that are still doing it to this day. So um, yeah, no 
bigger pat on the back <laughs> it's, it's spain has a lot to be proud of um and um you know with, with art and everything but you know architecture all that but when it comes to flamenco that for me that's like <laughs> i mean you you just you topped it all with flamenco flamenco's like the cherry on the top of all the other awesome they have and that's just it it has to be pretty yeah it's it's worth checking out so please please do go check it out and um go give these artists a uh look and like i said we got uh even more artists in the flamenco playlist and we're going to be featuring a lot more of these artists we were talking about today um in later uh videos but i had to get this list on the thing um in the in the playlist because i i think this is a very important list and it I mean, the list was put together from somebody who plays flamenco. So, yeah, I think it's valid. I think it goes in the playlist. Agreed? Cool. So, um, have a great day out there, everybody. We got tons more news, reviews, reacts, all sorts of awesome stuff. We got tons more to talk about with flamenco, Paco de Lucia, a ton of different awesome flamenco artists, and then some, a ton of new metal artists. Uh, speaking of Spanish, but not... Um, spanish music necessarily all the time although they got some spanish speaking songs the warning just came out with a new album they're from mexico um keep me fed go check that out trio of awesome sisters know how to lay it down they're gonna that's gonna be the hard rock album of the summer so if you haven't already go check that out if you're looking for some new music you never heard of the warning you are welcome because you're gonna have an awesome summer now so uh yeah have a great day out there, everybody, and we will see you in the next one. Like, comment, subscribe, suggest an artist or uh, something that you want us to check out, and uh, we will get to as soon as possible. See you in the next one.